when these cars were built, no one in the even in the wildest imagination was thinking in terms of people trying to record messages for Facebook, especially when they're banned because of mentioning uh, true remedies for COVID. So they get banned for 30 days. So nobody's thinking in terms of having to make videos and then upload them and all this kind of stuff from a car. So what we're stuck with is something stuffed and held in an air vent that rattles. And then you have to turn turn all the, uh, all, all the air conditioning off so you start sweating like mad <laughs> on a hot day. So these, these, this is just crazy. Um, it's very all of us. All of us. It doesn't it doesn't matter how we how we say. It says in the Bible, "Do not judge." Right? But all of us judge. So there must be a good way of judging and a bad way of judging. Because we live in a peer group, we decide at all times to go with the peer group or not. And how do we make that decision? By judging. So therefore, how? What's, what's the good side of judging and what isn't? Well, judging as in do not judge means we have not the right to ascribe eternal judgment to a person's current state. We can, we can, however, not want to go with what that person is suggesting, suggesting, or the behaviour in which he is carrying on. So I don't, I don't think anyone would quibble that if someone's becoming a raging alcoholic and a non-functioning person, the act of saying, "Look, bud, you've got a problem with alcohol," is a judgment. But I don't think anyone's going to say that's wrong, are they? But it's happening at finer and finer and finer levels, isn't it? That which is acceptable for a while becomes less and less acceptable as we see it more clearly for what it is. And that's kind of how things work. But in Christianity, how on earth do we know where, we, where on earth we are at the end of the day? My task that I've felt to carry on from Norma Grubb, along with lots of other people, is to simply tell the world that the charismatic move is not it, or the deeper Keswick move on its own is not it. Evangelicalism as it is, as deep as it goes in the word, in the Bible, is not it. Charismatic movement, as deep as it goes, and it is still going deeper, is not it. It's not, it's not quite the same as what is written in the Bible. So we come across 1 John 2, and 1 John 2 makes it clear there are three stages summarised in 1 John 2 that nobody has talked about and has been swept under the carpet. And anybody that appears really, really mature, such that people buy all their books, and those books endure over generations, we call special. No, they're not special. Watchman Nee would call them normal. Because um, that is that is normal growth. You wouldn't say to an adult, you are special. You, you've you made the adult stage. You are special. No, <laughs> it was normal. So, as we follow faith, faith builds into us according to three different stages. That's what happened over three lifetimes with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And that is why um, Watchman Nee made the link up between sit, walk, stand, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Ephesians chapters 1 through 6. Uh, a lot of theologians are going to say, how on earth did he come up with that? Well, actually, if you walk the walk, you can see it very clearly. We well, you know it is stamped on your being. But where 
I am in all that, once I've announced it, I don't know, I'm continually flawed. <laughs> but, I, but it is interesting to me, even in, a, let's take a musical octave, being a piano tuner, right? Being a piano tuner, say, you, let's take the key of C, because it hasn't got any sharps or flats, right? So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I mean, to confuse things in Germany, they stick an H where the B is. There'll be a historic reason for that? I don't know. So you're starting at C and you're going up the octave, right? There is a very exultant place that is an F. It's like we've got somewhere and you could stop off there. Then there's, you come to G, G is even more rock solid in a way. It is. You can actually terminate the piece of music you're playing immediately from G. It can go straight back to C again. So F and G at very, very prominent stages, but I would say G is more prominent, in as you play up the scale. And if you play the chords of that, that scale, then F chord and G chord are very strong. Here's the confusion then. When we're going through Christ, it says there are seven spirits of God. And to make things even worse, before I get into what I was going to say there, make things even worse, if there's a Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, four main classifications of the frequencies upon which humans operate, also described or related to Ezekiel, the four faces of man, uh, the four, the four different major, major component uh, classes inside man. <laughs> this is why it's so confusing. So God has possibly different sequences of gathering each of those classes of people to himself. So quite, as, as you're living in the Christian church, you can get a Matthew, and he sees everything in terms of order, and so he comes into, say, a John person's house, and, and everything's up in order, and it, nothing's in order, clothes everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, nothing, nothing in place. And he makes a judgment. That person is not yet mature. He has not put the government of God into being in his own place. Therefore, I will discount him. And a mark, uh, you know, might be more empathetic, empathetic, very down to earth, uh, relate with people very well. And so he looks upon all the other three types of navigation. Think well, they haven't even got that under under their belt yet. What what rubbish is that? I will not listen to them. They're not doers. They 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 cut straight across people. They have, they're not giving them basic human uh, respect. I will not listen. <laughs> Luke is it's just anything that doesn't make sense. Luke, he discounts, which is a real problem in the world of faith, because quite often things only make sense way after the fact of moving in faith and trusting God. So that's the big thing with that one. And they are, they, they are, they're, they're disapproving bastards, these Lukes. If you do not fit the bill of, of having something that looks to them explanatory, then they regard you and look at you uh, down their nose, and they regard John's as particularly childlike. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So have we, have we got everybody there? Yeah, and, and, and John as well. They, <laughs> they just see everything in spiritual black and white, so <laughs> from the word go. So <laughs> they just discount everybody that isn't flowing according to what the light that they currently have. 
which is an inside light. So these are some of the frictions that go on in every church, every place. In fact, they go on outside church, don't they? They, they? they are the frictions of life and in working together. And these, these, are the, these are the different stamps upon people. But then you have the confusing thing is working out how on earth you know how, how mature you are or where you're really at. It's how possibly you're not meant to know. We're not meant to know, but we can see, you know, if, if you've been baptised in the Spirit, you just know an evangelical is wrong because they discount the moving of the Holy Spirit today. They say the gifts don't happen anymore, but nothing supernatural happens because we've got a book now and they're just wrong. And they are very dangerous to committing blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the agent of God in the earth today. Jesus reigns from the, his Father's throne and the Father oversees the entire operation. And the Holy Spirit is the one here preparing a beautiful bride for the Son. So that's how dangerous the evangelical position is. And then, um, so, so how, how, do, how do you know? How do you know where you're at? For example, okay, this is a personal one. Um, I had a kind of David adultery kind of experience when I was nine, um, in my teens. And I had a prophet come to my door, just like David did. And he yanked me out and hooked me into another geographical region. Now, do, do I then assume that because I had that experience, and I, I was baptised in the Spirit 13, so I, I was starting earlier, do I, do I assume then that I'm already roughly where David was um, in, in his story? Well, evidently not, because I hadn't been chased around you know, within an inch of my life around deserts by a mad king with a, a complete army. And at that stage I hadn't really met up with the Dunham Cave type uh, ruffians and, um, you know, learned to relate and build relationships. So, so, you know, everybody's story is just so different. But, but David does has the thing in common in that I was used in bringing spiritual songs into the body of Christ really early. So I fully appreciate David going from just a psalm singer on the hills to all the other things that he seemed to go through, and many of which are just absolutely foreign to the law of God. You can't go into the holiest place and grab grab your hovis, grab your bread. You can't do that. But he got away with it. Normally speaking, if you committed adultery, you'd be stoned. But he got away with it. So it's something to do with a man going after the heart of God. And something also to do maybe more with the fourth, the, 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 the John type of person. Goodness knows. But it's something to do with going after the heart of God. Uh, you might meander, but you are learning that spontaneous living that is Christ in you, as you, every minute of the day, every day of the year, every, every year of your life. It's a different walk. It's a Romans 12, 1 walk. What Norman Grubb calls uh, um, the free fall of faith. You jumped off the cliff, you're going for it, and anything that happens is within that context. And it is very different from a person who is still controlling his life, has only dipped his feet in the Ezekiel 47 river, and everything appears altogether still. Well, largely because they're still living within the security of being perched on a particular layer of the occult pyramid in the earth. 
so when God says about shaking all things, that's the type of thing he's, he's talking about. Yet once more will I shake the heavens of the earth, and the earth that of things that can be shaken. What can't be shaken? Living on the rock, living on Jesus Christ. So when I hear testimonies, because I kind of missed out on, well I thought I missed out on um, Toronto, which is largely about the revelation of the fatherhood of God. But I have to look back and, and see there were times when I just freaked out to do with fatherhood and the people surrounding me at that stage embedding me into a relationship with God, like the people who discipled me, because I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd slam doors, I'd, I'd walk out, you know, as, think, as, as deep areas of my heart were being touched. So something of that order was going on in me back in the 70s. So when Mark Stibbe brings about a great anointing, talking about fatherhood and leading people into fatherhood in the 2000s, and it, uh, I think like the conference we were at was a river conference. You know, I'm just overawed. I'm thinking, wow, have I got this? Have I really got this? And I, you know. And, uh, so, so you're trying to find out where you are, and then the next thing you know, he's committed adultery, and his his, his poor wife has, uh, you know, wants to disown him, and, and Mark's remarried and, and can't really minister anymore because nobody in the judging churches, nobody will take anything he says seriously. Um, but what about what about the writer of the shack? I just saw his uh, testimony, glorious testimony. Um, but it involves adultery, and it involves um, being put back in joints, and it's a very moving testimony. But where is that? Where is that in in the spectrum? Is it up, up the key of C? Is it just kind of an initial point like F? You know, four stages in to the spirits of God. Where is it? Where is it? Is it the fifth? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't think everybody has to go through adultery, but everybody has to lose control in some way, and God covers you and keeps you. But but it, it is it's the loss of control, so that you see start to see Satan in your members. It is Satan. There is no independent self. There's no independent self platform. It's a lie. It's a delusion. At some point, God has to show us and shake us to our core and show us that. But does that mean that um, William Paul Young and Brad Jerzak and um, all these other people that run conferences. Does, does that mean they are really clear on third level living? Well, why don't they relate with me? Why don't they talk with me? It doesn't appear so. So where are they then? They're at some glory stage of level, because we move from glory to glory, that somehow doesn't relate with me yet. And then the teachings that I'm bringing. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's all, it's all really confusing and luckily it isn't for us to know everything, it's us, us to walk daily by the Holy Spirit, just follow the Holy Spirit, believe He is building His body, 